If you love creating floral drawings, then this video is for you. We're going to work through how to draw six simple flowers, but keeping them realistic and elegant. So grab your pencils, grab your fine liners, grab whatever you draw with, and let's get started. And I'm going to get started by sectioning off my paper into six sections. And this helps me just confine my flowers to their specific space. And the first flower we're going to start with is our daisy. We're going to start our daisy by drawing one big circle. And within that circle, we'll do a smaller circle in the middle. This is going to be the middle of our flower or for our um, florets of our daisy. And you don't really need to be concerned with how many petals are on a daisy. Um, this flower is very forgiving, so you can put 20 on it, you can put 10, and it's quite forgiving. And then we can go in with our fine liner or whatever you're working with today. Now I'm going to go in with my fine liner in a number 03, and I'm just going to go and outline everything. Um, once you've done outlining, I go in and I erase my pencil marks. To make it look clean and then I go in with my 01 file liner and this is where I start to really make the flower pop off the page by making those shadows. I start by making a line within each petal and this line is kind of like a contour line so it gives us the movement and the flow of each petal shape. After that I go down to where the florets are and I do some cross hatching to create some shadow illusion and I do a little bit in the middle as well just kind of giving the depth of everything. Okay and for our next flower we have the calla lily. Now this shape is going to be very soft and loose and curvy. So this flower kind of gives itself a little bit of a hug in a way. It has these two long arms that wrap around each other and a nice curved bell shape on the bottom. We have a pistol in the center, so keep it nice and thin. And once you're happy with the shape, you're gonna do some outlining. Now we're gonna go in and do some contour lines around the bottom of the flower to give it that shape, that curved shape that we're looking for. Now also on the right side of the flower is going to have some shadows, so I'm going to put a lot of lines on that side and even a little bit of cross hatching to create the illusion of shadow. Um, this will also be in the middle of the flower behind the pistol and that will create the illusion of depth within the flower. The next flower we're going to do is a tulip and we're going to start by creating a rectangle shape to give us just a very rough outline of what our flower is going to look like. I find my tulips look best when I have two petals on the outside and kind of an inner one and some back ones. So I create this shape by first starting with those two petals on the side and I create the rest as I go. And as I'm working here, I tend to round everything out a little bit more and I keep the edges of the petals very fluttery at the end rather than hard curved lines. So keep your pencil loose and anything kind of wiggly is a good thing. And little curves in the petal make it more realistic looking. Once we have our shape and we've erased our first draft in pencil, you can go in with your fine liner again and I like to start with one line in the middle of each petal and this gives a structure to the tulip and after I've done that I go in and start to make some smaller shadow lines near the bottom of the flower, the inside and kind of the edges of each petal. And of course I go in with some cross hatching to create shadow underneath the, the flower itself. Our next flower is a snowdrop and I love snowdrops because they're one of the very first signs of spring where I live and um, they're quite easy to draw so we're going to start with kind of these bulby circles um, and elongate these teardrop petals in a way um, and there's only really three visible so there's not a lot of petals to work with. 
So you're just going to find a shape that works for you. And I've got two snowdrops here, one that's open and one that's kind of a baby snowdrop. The stem has a very quick angle down and there's one kind of piece of grass type stuff that um, sticks up from the stem itself. So we're gonna include that as well. Now I'm gonna go in again and outline everything. So to create the shape of these snowdrops, they're very bulbous and they have a lot of curve to them. So they are going to do our contouring lines around the edges of the flowers and the petals. So you're gonna to wanna to keep them light. Um, underneath the or for the bottom petals you're going to be able to do some more cross hatching if you'd like to create that depth and that darkness um, but I do find that you don't need a lot of detail for these snowdrops to look good so you might find that less is more for this one you kind of quit while you're ahead <laughs> Our second to last flower is the cosmos flower and we are going to start by making that first big circle and the middle one on the inside for the pistil and we do have to be a little bit more conscious of the composition for this one and where the petal placement is um, there are seven petals on a cosmos and it's one of those flowers that you kind of have to be more specific um, unlike the daisy where you do really need to just have seven petals for it to look correct and the petals are tapered off so you kind of have these long teardrop shapes again and keep them fluttery at the end so keep those lines wiggly and the more movement you have in your hand the better for these ones but you might find you have to go in and kind of readjust some of the petals to make the composition work for you and with the cosmos if you'd like as you can see I'm doing here I've flipped up some of the petals so they're they have a curve upwards um, you can do that if you like or just leave it flat and open. Once you have the shape that you like, you can do that stem and the stem kind of has a nice curve to it. So a very slight bend or a slight S will work well for this one. And once you're happy with the composition of your flower, you can go in with your fine liner and start to outline everything. But I do have to say is you're going to keep the top part of the pistol open so don't outline that part quite yet okay so I'm gonna do two or three um, marks near the base of the petals to kind of get that movement and all of the fluttered up petals I'm going to create some darkness with right away. I'm going to do some cross hatching for the middle again and this is why I leave that part open. I find if you go and you make a mark or a full circle in the middle it just doesn't look right. So I find if you leave that part open it, it looks better. So we're going to go around, we're going to keep some of our shadow lines um, near the center and then also near the edges of the petals. Do some cross hatchings if you'd like to do some more darkness or if you don't like cross hatching you can just do more lines to kind of create um, an illusion of darkness in between the petals or underneath, whatever, whatever works for you. It's one of these flowers that I think you really have to trust the process, but I think you'll get there. And for our last flower, we are going to create a daffodil. And we're going to start this by creating three different circles. The middle circle is going to be very fluttery, and the smaller circle 
is going to be the base of our trumpet. So we're going to connect those two smaller circles together and then we'll start to create the petals. Now, similar to the Cosmos, we have to create a specific number of petals. So we need to create six petals on this one. So you might have to find you have to readjust the petals to make the composition work for you. But don't be afraid of going back in there however many times you need to create it into kind of a star shape in a way. So I have to go in a couple of times to make it work for myself as well. And once you're happy with the composition and the shape of your daffodil, go in with your fine liner and um, start outlining everything. So the top of the trumpet is going to be very um, fluttery. Use a wiggly line for that to create a realism effect. And once you've erased everything, um, you'll go in and create one line against each petal to create that movement as a guide. And you'll do some contour lines to create some shadow down at the bottom of the trumpet and create some rounding. And again, inside the trumpet, you're going to make some lines to create that darkness that will show some depth. And again, keep the lines when you're working on the petals. Create lines more toward the edges of the petals. And the more lines and hatching that you do that's at the base of each petal, the more depth you're going to create and the more um, realistic your flower is going to look. I do some cross hatching underneath the flower to create that shadow and just doing up some finishing touches. And here's our six flowers. Make sure you re-watch or pause the video when you need to and I hope you enjoyed following along. Thanks for being here and make sure to hit the subscribe button for more art projects and I will see you soon.